never done this before, but we're gonna do a, uh, a future interview. So we need to know how your bike race is going to go. Oh, how my bike is yeah, going to go. do a prediction of how this is going to go down today. <sighs> how this is gonna go down? Um, I'm probably gonna go too hard at the start because that's the thing I do. So I'm gonna have a mental battle telling myself not to go too hard at the start. And then I'm gonna get really, really hot at some point. And then I'm gonna imagine that there are more routes on the course than there really are. Uh, and then I'm gonna wish for death. And then I might catch one guy and then maybe get passed by the 50 plus leaders. And then maybe pass one other person. And then I'm gonna finish and damn the people that designed this course and collapse and crave nothing more than a nice Coca-Cola. And I'm gonna be just a total puddle of a mess. It's gonna be awesome. Like Nostradamus. Dude. Yeah. All right, he's got, he's won the marathon at the Bind Burner here, dude. 25 miles, there. 25 miles instead of 30 miles. A little short, but um, still felt like a cross country race. Still fast and uh, a lot of pedaling. Pretty typical barn burner, just a tad longer. How did it play out as far as the race? Was like, I know Pete went with you initially. Where yep. did you get rid of him? On the second lap, we were going through some traffic, and then somewhere around there, midway through the second lap, and just tried to just time trial. He was riding really well. He was really drilling it in the beginning, so I had no idea where he was, so I just kind of tried to stay on it the whole time. Right. What's, what's yeah. the hardest part about this court? The bumps. What's your, you're on a you're so on a bumpy. suspension. Yep, scalpel. Yeah, it's but it's just bumpy. Back gets tired, your hand gets tired. You know, so it's true mountain biking in that sense, but it's just bumpy, really bumpy. That's the toughest part. And then um, bumpiness and pedaling. How about yeah. the cornering? Cornering a factor? Is cornering, that just actually, I was thinking about that during the race. Some corners, if you hit them right, you don't need to be on the brakes at all, and that's kind of fun. Um, drifting in and out of them, but there's definitely a, a line to take on them. It's usually wide. If you take them wide, then you can be on the brakes as little as possible. Take Like in a cross race, just take them wide and then, yeah. So. All right, man. Great yeah. job today. Thank Thanks. you. Yep. Mike Lucell. Hi. How hot was the uh, marathon? That was, this is the first was, marathon ever at Barnburn. Right? Yeah, it was, it was, was, mar was marathon-y. I mean, it was kind of marathon-y. It was 50K. But it's so fast. Like I, I did it in two and a half hours. So I'm assuming that Andy Scott did it in like I don't know two hours. So it's it's mighty quick. It's a lot of pedaling, and it's a really really fun really fun. I love this place. This is one of my favorite places to race bikes. It's really good. Why do you like it so much? The bimps, like Bot says, the bimps is bimpy. And the corners are weird. You're not on a hardtail. You're, you're no hardtail. Look at this thing. Got Look at this thing. Oh, I got kind of key. The here. suspension bike that with a completely blown out fork. Uh, I gotta fix that. You didn't see that. Uh, everything's fine. My bike. You like so the bumps. The bimps. You I like enjoy the bumps. They're a lot of That's fun. The best part. Though this place, this place has a very specific kind of technical riding where if you can float and blast into a corner and straight line stuff, you actually can carry a fair amount of speed. If you get tentative or you're wrecked, or like in my instance, you're completely destroyed on the last lap and can't make good decisions ever, then you make more mistakes. But if you can straight line stuff, this course is incredibly fast and so, so fun. As you'll notice, if you run 800s here, you uh, don't end up with bar end plugs at the end of the race. And also you have bloody knuckles. It's a good time. All right, thanks, Mike. So you, you were battling with Mike Wassell and like, were you, uh, were you Fourth, fifth, fifth, we were fifth. we were good question. We were no, we were three four. We were three four from the beginning. Pete and Andy rode away right at the start, and we had them. We got within about five seconds of them on the extension for the 50k, and then climbed back up the single track there, and they pulled away and got a little gap on us, and we probably 30, 40 seconds back on the first lap, and then they disappeared. Mike and I rode together for the next two, and then I pulled away on the last one. It was fun. Where did where'd you uh, pull away from? Where did you get them? Uh, right up here on that little punchy climb on the whatever that is, the orange trail. I just got up to the top of that and kind of dove down, and that was it. Got a few seconds on them and just slowly pulled away.
So, yeah, it was fun. I love coming here. Ride my bike from home to bike race. No car. It's the best. <laughs> Overcome my technical difficulties. All right, so Logan Casper's <laughs> one here at the Barn Burner. The pro race. How to go out there, man? It was good. Super hot. Uh, I put in some good efforts in the beginning because it's pretty much all single track. <clears throat> so I was like, I kind of need to be in that front group the whole time if I want a chance. I just didn't want a bottlenecking. Um, Bobby was pushing super hard <laughs> and then just kind of let me by on like a double track. I don't know if he tapered off. And then I uh, settled into like 20 minutes of just balls to the wall. And yeah. Ever since then, I could see people on the switchbacks, which was really tricky because you can't judge like, oh, are they a couple of bike lengths behind me or right there? Then I biffed it on one of the switchbacks, got up, kind of did another little sprint thing, and then the third lap was like, this is hot and hard now, just be smart about it. And ended up taking the win, so I'm pretty stoked. That's two right, in a row. Are you the series leader at this point? Yeah, I am. I was the last race. And uh, now I am here too. You got locked so. up. Yeah. So I think uh, no matter how I do on the next race, it's it's mine. But still gonna try to do the best. <laughs> All right, man. Well, good stuff today, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ben Lust Garden. Yeah. Hi. Not bad for a for a skier. Yeah. Not too shabby. Are you starting to identify more as a mountain biker these days? Oh no, I'm all the skier, no, but all skier all I'm getting time. better, which feels good. We just get second here at the barn burner. Yes. The pro race. Yeah. All right, so how'd it go out there? It seems to like uh, Logan was not far ahead of you at the end. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, we all went out really hard, and there's a couple of punchy climbs in the beginning. So like heart rate was high in the beginning and then just stayed really high. Uh, I was in the group. We were all kind of together, and then I was in the group for second because Logan kind of took off on us. Um, and then we were kind of mixing up a bit. I think I took the lead of that uh, chase pack uh, Finishing the first lap and then second lap I kind of Thought I was dying a bit so I thought it was gonna be a pretty brutal end But I just kept pushing all the little climbs and trying to make all the time through It's a lot of like technical turning so kind of just maintaining traction as much as possible and then Thankfully, I didn't have to like out sprint anybody because I was pretty wiped at the end I think it would be a proper interview if I didn't ask you stupid Nordic questions. Oh, perfect. Like in a Nordic event, what's the duration of your event? Um, well, 15 Ks are around 40 minutes, okay. and then sprints are really short. Um, they're like three minutes, and then we have 30 Ks, which are like an hour 25. So this is more like a 30 K, and then we have 50 Ks, which are like 215. So, so this is, is around our 30 K. Is your heart rate kind of consistent through those, or is it, is, are you following attacks? Is it sort of the same For as Nordic racing, or is yeah. it more like solid? Uh, um, Steady. I feel like you can almost rest a touch more on the descents because you're kind of just tucking in a ski race Whereas this like you're up you're kind of sprinting a lot. It's it does feel pretty similar though Yeah, and then drafting is important as well. Which one's harder? <sighs> uh, that yeah, I mean for the legs. Oh I don't know like climbing in Nordic skis is hard to beat that's hard to beat But this for is like it, when you don't have the legs biking's harder, but around August this time of year My legs are getting better. So it's feeling a bit more normal um, uh, but Nordic skiing because you use more upper body, they're like right. triceps, yeah. Sweet dude. Thanks. Right, thanks for us, yeah. uh, answering my stupid question. Oh, uh, it's all good. <laughs> That's a breeze. You had a uh, hell of a sprint there. Oh. Hey, for, for third? Yeah, yeah, sprint for third. <laughs> yeah, we were camping coming in, we just kept surging and it was like, he was just glued to my wheel. I couldn't shake him for a lap and a half. Really was in, in my head hoping we could close in on second, but that wasn't wasn't gonna be the case at all. So we just uh, had to just play it tactfully and just do a little double stage sprint to keep them behind me into the finish here. But I held on for third, so I was stoked. <laughs> Is that were you okay with leaving it to a sprint, or did you try to shake him earlier than I that? I tried to shake him the entire lap, <laughs> and he might not know that, but I was. <laughs> 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 all right, good. He said he felt it. That makes me feel better. <laughs> I would like go as hard as I could through the single track and then we let up on the straightaways because he was still there so we just soft pedal drink get back into the single track again and just start hitting it again and yeah, we were just stuck together couldn't shake him I mean he obviously knows how to ride a bike we're on the same cross cross team with Felosio so um, but uh, we're frenemies here today <laughs> I see. Well, good stuff man. that made it exciting Thanks. Oh, that was great thank you Okay, so first place today at Barnburner. Are you also are you also leading the series as well? Yes. So as of right now, yeah. 
All right. So uh, <laughs> how did it go out there today? What happened? It was good. It was really hot. Um, it's really rooty and rocky, so it takes a lot out of your legs. But you just have to keep pedaling and get through it. <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen you at other races. I know you're a good climber. How is mm -hmm. it on something that's this? I mean, it's almost dead flat. Yeah, it, this is a lot more tough for me because I don't have that straight pedaling power. I'm a lot better on the hills, but it's, you know, with the roots and the rocks and stuff, it still takes a lot out of your legs. So. Yeah, I mean, do you do you kind of prepare for it differently or do anything equipment-wise differently um, than a climbing race? Not really. Um, a lot of the places where I ride, they don't have a ton of hills, so it's mostly I'm doing flat anyways. <laughs> was there any so. point today, I mean, so it looks like you, had, you came in here with like minutes, mm -hmm. but was there any point where you felt like it was in doubt at all or do you, or do you feel like you had it The whole the first two laps, uh, there was, um, Danielle was right behind me, she kept, she's really close and I was like, oh, <laughs> I just wanted to quit, but I just kept going. <laughs> Yeah, it was hot out today, so. All right, well, great job. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so Christoph Hopkins. So you were first in the junior race. Yep. Today, how did it play out? It seemed like you came in with a with a substantial margin here at the end. Yeah. How did it play out? So we were all kind of tight at the beginning. It was like I didn't get to pre-ride, so I was pretty sloppy on all of the tech stuff, but I was able to get up in the top three. We kind of dropped third, uh, like middle of lap two. And then the two of us kept pushing out front. Going into the third lap here, uh, the kid who was with me dropped his chain and gave me a big lead. It's kind of upset because then I had to like lead a whole lap by myself. But I just kept the pace up and I think it worked. <laughs> What's it like racing against, you're kind of mixed in with other categories here, not just other kids in a Nesca race. What's what's it like it's doing pretty, that? It's pretty confusing. Like uh, in a Nesca race, I'm always like almost absolutely sure of my position the whole time. But here it's like random people passing me that are different categories and I don't really know what to do. Do you kind of do, you, do you kind of race within yourself or do you ever get like overly excited and start to go with someone who might be potentially faster? Sometimes I do that, yeah. <laughs> All right, are you gonna be up at uh, at Eastern Grind? I don't think I can make it. Uh, I think I'm doing the Overland if that's the yeah. same weekend. Yeah. All right. Good stuff, man. All yeah. right, thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, so Jamie Power Jamie came Power. across hard there for second place. How'd it go out there? Um, this is my home course. We literally like live right on the other side of the woods there, so um, I know this course really well, and um, it was fun to be here. Um, this trailing Kim Milton, who is a beast and um, I don't even think she sweats when she rides she's just so composed so I saw her ahead of me and I knew I just I kind of had to let her go a little bit in order to finish strong um, so I'm really happy with my race and just hoping to get faster next year um, we're really lucky to have this race here yep. it's like as you know having it be your home court was there any spot where you really felt like you had an advantage like you really knew some tricky stuff that was coming up yeah um, I know the turns really well, especially over in the power lines. That's where I do a lot of my training rides. So I'm personally not great at climbing, but I love descending and I, I the trickier it is, um, the sketchier it is, I'm really comfortable with it. So there's a lot of like rocky, rooty, tight turns here and that's where I try to punch it uh, to be able to stay in the race. All right, so I was also just informed, like you, you basically have chronic Lyme disease. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so yeah. how how do you manage that and how does it affect your racing? Um, to be honest, I, I think it helps my racing just because it motivates me to take advantage of having one chance to be my best. Um, I had a really hard time for four years even just walking, so spinning the bike was my best chance of staying active and exercising, so um, it gave me uh, a chance to participate and compete again so every time I'm on the bike I, I just try to push it as hard as I can and take advantage of being able to use my body but I do think I recover slowly and I have to really be good about sleeping and eating and resting. Is it just is it like inflammation and stuff like that? Is that the main sort of factor? Or? Uh, fatigue. Yeah. I have a lot of chronic pain, a lot of stiffness, um, a lot of nerve pain all over my body. It kind of flares up sometimes. Um, I am probably like 75% back to normal, which I think is great. And uh, I'm just trying to, to get as fast as I can 
um, while I can. So, yeah. yeah, can't wait to see what happens to you have that other 25%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, great job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>